Today we start a four-week series on one of the most famous stories that Jesus ever told. Those are called parables in the Bible. It's the parable of the prodigal son. You can find it in Luke chapter 15. And here's what we're going to be looking at throughout this entire series. I want you to think about where you would fall on this continuum. On one side, we have rule breakers. On the other side, we have rule keepers. Where would you put yourself or even your spouse or your kids or your friends? And here's the lesson that we're going to be learning throughout this series. If you are far from God, no matter how far, there is still hope for you. Now, if you know the story of the prodigal son, you know that that guy was a rule breaker. We'll see that in just a minute. But this actually also applies to rule keepers. One of the surprising lessons in this parable, and we're going to learn this in week number three, is that rule keepers can also be far from God. So wherever you've placed yourself on this continuum, no matter how far from God you feel right now, there really is still hope for you. So to illustrate this point, Jesus told the people a story. He said, a man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So the father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. Now, a couple of things about the Jewish rules real quick here so that you understand this parable. First of all, the older son was entitled to two-thirds of the inheritance, and the younger son, the guy here in the story so far, was entitled to one-third. Also, the father could certainly give his estate away or the inheritance away early, but the father had the rights to all the proceeds in the meantime until he died. So when the son takes his inheritance early and when he sells it, it was incredibly rude. It was incredibly dishonoring to his father. And here's what the Old Testament law says about that. Back in Deuteronomy 21, it says, Suppose a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father or mother, even though they discipline him. In such a case, the father and mother must take the son to the elders as they hold court at the town gate. The parents must say to the elders, this son of ours is stubborn, he's rebellious, he refuses to obey, he's a glutton and a drunkard. And then all the men of his town must stone him to death. Now, that's a pretty intense prescription there in the Old Testament. This certainly isn't what we do today. It's not what the people in Jesus' day would have done either. But the point is this, it was a big deal to dishonor your father or your mother. And in this parable, the prodigal son was very dishonoring, and it was a shock to the hearers. Certainly, they were like, whoa, that's not right. There is something wrong here. It was as if the son was saying to his father, you're as good as dead to me. And it's with this background that we'll pull out three lessons for rule breakers from the story that Jesus is about to tell. The first lesson is just an obvious observation. The farther you wander, the further you'll be. Luke 15, starting in verse 13, Jesus continues the story. He says, a few days later, this young son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. Now, if you are a rule breaker, or if you know a rule breaker, then maybe you can relate to this statement here. The prodigal son ends up far, far away. The story just says he ends up in a distant land. That's a good description, isn't it? Some people have wandered so far away from God that even today, if you're listening to this, even today, you might just feel like you are so far gone that there is no way that God could ever reach you. Maybe you feel as far away as the prodigal son in this story. In fact, it says in verse 15 that he persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. And keep in mind that pigs were unclean animals to the Jewish people, so this was like adding insult to injury. Now, the Bible background commentary tells us that at this point, many of Jesus' hearers may be ready for the story to end, like a similar second century Jewish story and a kind of moral lesson that they might tell their children. The son gets what he deserves. He's reduced to the horrendous level of feeding the most unclean of animals. 
But this is Jesus telling the story, and this is not where the story ends. The second lesson gives us a little bit of hope. It's not too late to turn back if you're willing to repent. Verse 17, it says, When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I'll go back to my father and I'll say, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. So just take me on as a hired servant. Now, when it says there that he came to his senses, it's talking about this biblical idea of repentance. I know that's a little bit of a fancy word, but repentance just simply means changing your mind and changing your heart attitude toward God. So here this guy is sitting there with the pigs and he finally comes to his senses. He finally realizes that he was wrong. Now, godly sorrow means that you do it for God's sake. We see that here in this passage that he recognizes he's sinned against his father. He's even sinned against heaven. That's godly sorrow. Worldly sorrow is when you're just sorry that you got caught. That's not what's happening here. What's happening in this passage is that the prodigal son finally genuinely repents. And it's only repentant people that learn this final lesson, that you can never out sin God's forgiveness. Verse 20, he returns home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. And his son said to him, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Now, this is where the crowd that's listening probably gets their first big jolt because they don't expect the father to act like this. They think, of course, that you can out sin God's forgiveness. In fact, maybe that's how some of you think right now. Your picture of God is that he would never take you back. Maybe that's why you haven't ever come back. But that's not what we see in the story. Consider the dictionary definition of this word prodigal. It actually means spending money or resources freely and recklessly. To be prodigal is to be wastefully extravagant. You see, the true prodigal in this famous story isn't the son. The real prodigal is the father. The main character in this parable is the father who represents God. Because Jesus is telling the story to try to help the people understand God's heart for people. He wants to make sure that the prodigal understands that you can never out sin God's forgiveness. And we'll talk more about the father in the next lesson. And don't forget, if you want to talk about all of these lessons with your family or your small group or one-on-one -on -one with a mentor, you can find resources for this entire series at pursuegod.org forward slash prodigal.